Hello everybody, uh, this is Sin City Preacher. Uh, please just call me Brother Luke. I got saved uh, in December of 1986. So that's been almost 24 years now. And over that time span, uh, I have had thousands of dialogues with people, with individuals and with gatherings, crowds of people, audiences, uh, on the subject of Jesus Christ and salvation. And I have attempted to do what I've been instructed to do in the Bible, and that is spread the seeds of the gospel. Tell people the good news that God loves you so much that he became a man named Jesus Christ and he died on a cross to pay for all your sins and mine and he was buried but on the third day he rose from the dead because he has power over life and death and Jesus Christ offers every one of us life everlasting life in heaven he offers it to us as a free gift through faith in him this is the good news this is the gospel of our salvation and I've been spreading this gospel for about 24 years there's three important questions that I want to make sure everybody has the answer to one Jesus asked the question, who do you say that I am? I wanted everyone to know who Jesus is. And he is God in the flesh. He is the Savior of the world, the one and only Savior. Another question you must know the answer to is, what must I do to be saved? And the answer to that question is very simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you're saved. When you believe Jesus Christ is your Savior because he paid for your sins on the cross, you're saved. We're saved by the grace of God through faith alone in Christ alone. And the other question that we must answer is, what will you do with Jesus Christ? When Jesus Christ was put on trial by the Roman governor Pontius Pilate, Pontius Pilate asked the crowd, what shall we do with this Jesus? And that's the question every one of us has to answer. What will you do with Jesus Christ? Will you reject Jesus and say you don't need him? Will you, will you say that you're, you're going to find some other way to go to heaven, even though Jesus Christ claimed that he is the one and only way to get to heaven? Are you, are you going to receive Jesus as your Savior? Are you going to rely completely on Jesus Christ for your salvation? What will you do with Jesus Christ? These are the three questions that I want to make sure everyone has the answers to those questions. Now, I try to dialogue with anybody who is willing to talk to me about that subject. But Jesus also told us, do not cast your pearls to the swine. Now, who are the swine? If you study that part of the Bible, you, you'll come to the conclusion that the swine are individuals who have a really bad attitude, and all they want to do is mock and argue and Jesus says, the pearls, that's this good news, the good news that Christ died for your sins. Uh, and you can have salvation as a free gift from God if you'll trust Jesus. That's the good news. That's the pearl. And he says, do not cast our pearls to the swine, to those people who have a, a bad attitude and just want to mock and ridicule. The... The other point Jesus makes it, it, in regarding who to tell this good news to is he says some people have ears to hear, 
Some people don't have ears to hear. Do you have ears to hear? Do you want to hear this good news? Or do you want to tune it out and ignore it and just argue? So I've had to learn to discern uh, to whom I pass the, cast these pearls to. Um, I am not responsible for any results. People ask me sometimes when I'm preaching the gospel and publicly uh, in the streets. And uh, people sometimes ask me this um, with my uh, dialogues with you on YouTube. They'll ask me, well, what kind of results do you get? Do you ever get any results? Every time I speak, I get results. The, re the people either believe it, reject it, hear it, don't hear it. There's always some kind of result that comes. But personally, I'm not responsible for the result of you getting saved. I'm just responsible to tell you the good news. That's what God expects of me, that I will tell you the good news. Then it's out of my hands. And the Bible also says that I should always be ready with an answer. If someone has a, a question about the Bible or a question about my faith, I should be study and be prepared so that I'm ready to give an answer. And I've tried to study and I've tried to be ready and I've tried to give those answers. Unless you are swine, unless you don't have ears to hear, then I have to be intelligent enough to discern that I can't cast my pearls this way. You don't have ears to hear. That's a decision I have to make. I have to be wise and be able to discern. But I've noticed that there's many people on YouTube that I've encountered that um, some of you are, are believers, you're true believers, you, you believe the true gospel, but I, some of you are so emotionally involved in other people's conversions that you really let it really get to you, and you really let it bother you and hurt you. You, you, you appear to be in pain and over the rejection from other people. And I understand that because uh, I've been through that myself. As I said, I've talked to thousands of individuals. I've talked to millions of people in groups over the years. So I've gone through that process where I was very emotionally invested. And it personally hurt me when people rejected this good news. But one of the things I've learned, one of the things I'm hoping that you can learn from this message today, is that there comes a point where we have to learn uh, what a, a doctor has to learn. And that is detachment. If you are a, a doctor and you're treating people for fatal diseases, say, cancer, and you know that most of your patients are going to die. You have to adopt an attitude of detachment because if you get emotionally involved and invested with every individual and then they die, it'll crush you. You cannot cope with it psychologically and emotionally. So doctors are taught they must detach themselves from these patients. So, I think that would be helpful for you if, if you can learn that it's not your responsibility to get someone saved. You can't save them. I can't save them. Only Jesus can save them, and he will. When they trust Jesus for salvation, they get saved. It's only our responsibility to tell them the good news, to be ready with an answer, but also have the discernment to know if it's swine or if the ears are closed. You have to have that intelligence and discernment to make that judgment. Now the point I'm making is that I recently added a statement on my profile on my YouTube channel. 
and I wanted to make this video to clarify why I put this statement on it. I'll, I'll read it to you now. It says, I will try to communicate with everyone who sincerely wants a dialogue. However, I have learned to discern to whom I should cast the pearls, see Matthew chapter 7 verse 6, and to whom I must cut off communications. If I determine that someone simply wants to argue or that continued dialogue is a waste of time, then I will cut off communications with them. I will block you. Now, Do I care if you get saved? Well, let's just say that my family, my parents, my siblings, my relatives, my closest friends that I've known all my life, I have invested all the time I could to make sure they know the good news. And many of them were saved. Some of them don't want to hear about it. Those people, I love them. And I really care whether they get saved or they don't. But a stranger? Do I care if they get saved? Not really. It's, it's, not, it's not up to me. It's, it, it's just up to me to tell you the good news. And after that, it's out of my hands. What will you do with Jesus Christ? You have to make that decision. So I'm hoping that other people who have channels on YouTube who are spreading the gospel, you can learn from this it's because some of you seem to be getting very depressed when you get caught up in these arguments with people. Sometimes you're spending a lot of time arguing with swine. All right, I hope you learned something from this message. Bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.